GM mellan Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Believe it or not, but I haven't always been a person that perhaps some of you perceive me to be a person. Something like... <laughs> a nasty monster ripping the souls of people apart with terrible claws and poisonous fangs criticizing your speeches, that is. <laughs> Some 15, 20 years ago, I was a regular boy spending time with my friends. We played plenty of pleasant games. We, of course, discussed girls. And we tried to seem older and tougher by swaggering and swearing. A typical conversation of ours back those days sounded perhaps something like, and I will use the word bleep instead of the actual words we used. Hey, bleep, Dennis, how bleep are you? I don't all bleep right. What are you going to do today? Well, how about bleep throwing snowballs at passing cars and then running away from bleeping drivers? It's a bleeping awesome idea! <laughs> I have to confess, though, that compared to other boys, I almost haven't used full language. And once I used that feature of my, to my advantage, to stand out, I offered the boys to play a game. We should watch ourselves and not to use the foul language. I was a bleep master and a participant at the contest. Well, of course, winning the contest was as easy as, say, for a sparrow to win, say, mice in a flying contest for me. But it was fun I mean, looking at guys, how they struggled to express their ideas without using any expletives. Many times, many years passed before in Moscow free speakers, I experienced something resembling the game I played back then. Of course, there are some similarities between accounting and bleep counting, but there are some differences as well. One of the differences is that, in my opinion, for language is, is harmful for your vocabulary. I mean, in long term, it is a very good instrument in that you can express many ideas emotionally using a limited amount of words. But if you use it very often, I think that you trade the gold of your subtle and rich language for glass beads of primitive, though emotionally strong language. Accounting deals with something different. Fillers. Compared to full language, to expletives, accounting, fillers, I meant fillers. Fillers don't substitute the words we use, but they rather, as the name implies, fill the spaces, fill the pauses that we have in our speeches. Browsing the internet, I met an interesting hypothesis concerning fillers. The hypothesis the hypothesis states that people learn early to use fillers to signal their partners in the conversations that even though they, at the moment, at a loss of words, they don't want to pass the torch just yet. <laughs> I'm using my paws, not a filler. So thus, <laughs> thus, using fillers is natural and normal thing to do. And I know that even some of our distinguished members, and I think Al Agano is a primary example of such a person, think that using fillers, even in public speeches, is not a big deal. Am I correct, Al? You're correct. Moreover, reading, and there are heated debates in the internet with our fellow Toastmasters in the US concerning whether it is good to use fillers or not good, 
and I met referrals to Barack Obama using fillers in his public speeches and doing just fine with that. So you may ask, based on that, you may ask me, Dennis, linguists think fillers are, is not a, that big a deal. Our distinguished members think it's not a big deal. Barack Obama thinks it's not a very big deal. And here you are again, trying to find something to criticize in our speeches. You are really a monster. You remember the picture, right? Well, bear with me a little longer. Granted, linguists think that fillers are natural in conversations. And a public speech is not a conversation in that there are no terms. It is about you, the stage, and the audience. You have your time. What is the purpose of using fillers? Secondly, talking about your, the impression you produce on people and the number of fillers you use during your speeches, I remember a time, a meeting, when Diana, Diana Verishagina, a former member of Toastbusters, was the accountant. And when she was delivering her report at the end of the meeting, she said that even though she was skeptical of the value of such a role at our meetings, by the end of the meeting, she found that listening to those who used few or no fillers, people, those people sounded more authoritative and more convincing to her. Moreover, it's not just all, only about function and persuasiveness. I think you can damage the beauty of your speech as well. What do I mean by that? When you start delivering a speech, when you deliver a speech, especially a speech rich in vocal variety, you use, you weave in your words and sentences, weave in your words and sentences into melodies, into music of your speech. And fillers don't help interrupt, disrupt the flow of your speech. On the whole, take, taking this into account, I think that the major goal of our counters in general and my role this evening in specific is not to find minor things to criticize you for, but rather to show you the fact that you usually use fillers. And when you, are, when you notice that you use fillers, you can either try to reduce the number of fillers you use in your speech, or you can try to eliminate completely fillers <laughs> from your speech, or you want to try to ignore, you want to choose to ignore the fillers in your speech. Good luck with your speeches today, and watch your fillers.